fellow backs a horse called Yellow Yellow, wins a quarter of a million pounds. Has all his house painted yellow, yellow carpets, yellow furnishings, everything yellow. And he got yellow jaunas and he died and they can't find him. <laughs> <laughs> fellow walked in a boot and shoe repair. He said, I've come for my boots. He said, when do you leave him? He says, 1933, Wednesday afternoon, September the 15th. <laughs> He says, you what? <laughs> he says, September 1933, the 15th, Wednesday afternoon. He said, this shop's changed hands 15 times since then. He said, well, I'll have to have them. I'm starting work in the morning. <laughs> he said, have you got the ticket? He said, aye. Gives him a nice clean ticket. He says, oh, it's ridiculous, this, he said. Goes down the cellar, comes back full of the, well, black as the ace of spades. He said, I've got them. Ready Thursday. <laughs> Magician working the big liners, doing all his tricks, and the parrot on the side there keeps saying, it's up his sleeve, it's down his jumper, it's up his trousers leg. Queers the, queers the act. And the ship's boiler's blue. <laughs> and him and the parrot's on this plank for four days. And the parrot's looking at him like that. And after four days, the parrot said, okay, I give up. What have you done with the ship? <laughs> Fellow walks in a hairdresser says, give us a Tony Curtis. Cut all his hair off, just like an egg. He says, you Burke. You know who Tony Curtis is? He said, well, I should do. I saw the King and I 14 times. <laughs> Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones. Going through the customs at Heathrow Airport, the customs official said, have you got any LSD on you? Purple arts, cannabis? I said, no, what made you ask? He said, well, you got here half an hour before the plane. <laughs> the Lions were playing the ants in the middle of the jungle football. The Lions was all over these ants, winning three none. But the little wider ants fetched a centipede on half-time. Played the game of its life, scored 14 goals. And they're running off at full time, and the Lions captain ran over to this ant, this centipede, he said, I've never seen such fantastic football in my life. <laughs> I wish he didn't come out in the first half. He said, I was putting my boots on. <laughs> Hairdressers winner in Liverpool, Beetle haircut, six months. This fellow went in, he cut all his hair off. He said, hey, pal, he said, the Beatles aren't on their haircut like this. He said, they do if they come in here. <laughs> Fellow talking to his mate, he said, I've had a lot of bad luck, he said, with marriage. He said, I wouldn't get married again. He said, I've been married twice. A lot of bad luck. He said, why? He said, well, first that wife di died eating poison mushrooms. What about your second wife? He says, uh, fractured skull. He said, how was that? He said, she, she wouldn't eat your mushrooms. <laughs> Fellow walks in this pub. Pinches a boomerang off the wall, the landlord cops him, and he shoved it up his jumper, you know. Slung him out, 78 times. <laughs> Fellow walks in the doctor, he said, how do I stand, doctor? He said, you live to be 80. He says, I, I'm 80. He says, uh, what'd I tell you? <laughs> On site, Granada comes to Withenshaw Estate, Manchester. Get the picture in the studio, Councillor Smith, Councillor Jones, Councillor Brown. Sat in champagne bucket chairs, smoking King Edward cigars, sipping Napoleon brandy, fitted carpet, the best of everything. Where's the punters on Withenshaw? In the pouring rain. Hey! Are you there, Ray Gosling? Yes, I'm here. And I'm very stood here, I'll tell you. Are we on the air yet? We're on now. Good evening. <laughs> on site this week comes from uh, Withenshaw Estate, Manchester. And we have a Mr. Mitchell off the estate who has a complaint for Councillor Jones. Mr. Mitchell. Thanks very much, son. Thank you. Councillor Jones, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. <laughs> It's about our roof. 
<laughs> yes, we want one. <laughs> Fifteen a week for these outage councils is a disgrace. We've got bugs. <laughs> well, put your bed away from the wall. <laughs> We've done that, they pull it back. <laughs> I threw a bucket of petrol on them the other night to come out on motorbike. <laughs> I'm sick of these houses, I'll tell you. The walls are that thin, I opened the oven door the other day, there's a fella dipping his bread in our gravy. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, Councillor, I think I'm the only one that works up here. There's some right layabouts live on this estate, I'll tell you. The fella next door to me, last job he had, school prefect. <laughs> one of his insurance stamps is worth more than a penny black. <laughs> He's been on the door that long, he goes to the staff dances. <laughs> Now listen, councillor, what are you going to do about the pond at the bottom of the garden there? What are you going to do about that pond? I've been complaining about 14 years about that pond. Now you're doing nothing about it. Well, Mr Mitchell, can I... What are you going to do about that pond? Can I speak? What are you going to do? Well, Mr Mitchell, if you don't let me speak, I won't be able to tell you. Now just settle down, please. We know all about this pond. And we had a meeting only last week, the town and country planning. About this pond, Mr. Mitchell, and we're going to send you three ducks. <laughs> like as you lad goes to the vets, flat cat, white rain, cold galoshes, woodbine. He said, I've come about me cat. It's poorly. He says, Is it a Tom? He says, No, I brought it with me. He said. <laughs> The fellow went to the psychiatrist and I can't stop telling lies and I don't believe you. <laughs> Trump walks in the doctors. The doctor says, get out of here, you stink, you smell. Get out of here. <laughs> smell, get out. He said, the doctor next door told me that. He said, what are you doing in here? He said, I wanted a second opinion. <laughs> Little old woman goes in this greengrocer's shop. She said, five pound of potatoes. He said, will you take King Edward? She said, no, let him come for his own. <laughs> Two drunks walk in this hotel, well slushed, straight up to the reception. He says, come here, Paul. Have you got a room with two single beds in for me and Charlie? He said, certainly, sir, room 309. And they're both that drunk, they can both get in the same bed. He says, Charlie, that fella's twisted us. He said, we're getting two single beds, there's someone in bed with me. He says, Fred, there's someone in bed with me, I know. He said, well, I'm going to sling mine out. And he gets hold of Charlie and bang, right down the wall. He said, I've slung him out, Charlie. He says, Fred, mine slung me out. He said, well, don't bother. Get him with me. <laughs> Mr. Kosygin was inspecting three ranks of troops in the Red Square. <laughs> all very quiet. And all of a sudden, Ashoo! He says, Who sneezed? Another titter. Who sneezed? Nothing. He says, Sergeant, shoot the front rank. <laughs> Steps over. He says, Right. Who sneezed? Nothing. Sergeant, the second rank. <laughs> now then, who sneezed for the last time? The little Russian soldier says, Comrade Kosygin, it was I. He says, you? Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven's valley went in. He said, I'm leaving you. He said, how do you mean you're leaving me? You've been with me 22 years. He said, I'm, I'm sick of hearing you playing the piano morning, noon and night. It cost me six quid a week for Aspros. <laughs> he said, you can't leave me after 22 years. I get my inspiration from you. He says, me, don't make me laugh. Ha, 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 ha. 
fella pays 400 quid for a diving lung aqua kit and all the lot. Dives off the deep end at Newquay. He's down about 4,000 foot. <laughs> Little fair, fella there in a bikini. He thought, 400 quid for this equipment up in Condi. <laughs> 10,000 feet. This fella follows him down. <laughs> 400 quid. Straight to the bottom. This fella's there again. <laughs> Gets his slater. I've paid 400 quid for this equipment. How come you're down as far as me? And the fella writes back, I'm drowning, you nit. <laughs> Family on this estate wouldn't pay any rent. So they sent the bailiff up with a blue paper. Summons. Under the door. They had a pair of bellows the other side. Blew it back. <laughs> So he shoved it under again, they blew it back again, it's gone on for about four hours. Texas summons back to the town hall, he said, you get the rent? He said, no, and I wouldn't pay any rent for a drafty bloody house like that. <laughs> Fellow walks in a pub like that. Landell said, a bit of shell chock, pal. He said, no, he said, I can tell the time with this. <laughs> what time is it then? He says, quarter to 11. He said, you're wrong, it's 11 o'clock. Oh, he said, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kosigan's going round this big factory with Ted Heath. He said, What time do they start work here? He said, Well, they start about eight o'clock, clocking on. He said, In Russia, they start at six o'clock in the morning. Any breaks? Oh, he said, They knock off about ten o'clock, all this wagon comes up and cup of tea and that. In Russia, no breaks. How long for dinner? He said, well, you get an hour. He said, something like a bet. He said, take an hour and a half. <laughs> In Russia, 10 minutes for dinner. Sandwiches, Russian sandwiches by the machine. What time did they finish? He said, oh, they're pumping the bikes up at four o'clock, he said. <laughs> Full of Mr. Children's Hour, he said, on the television. <laughs> In Russia, they work till 10 o'clock at night. Six in the morning till ten o'clock at night in Russia. He said, you couldn't get these lads to do that. He says, why not? He says, because they're all communists. 